Hey everybody, welcome to episode 38 of the Fiberista Files. Today is Sunday, June 19th. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, including my own daddy. Happy Father's Day. Uh, let's get started. Um, if you don't know me, if you're just tuning in for the first time, I'm Heather, your host, S. I always want to say with the most S, but it doesn't even really rhyme. Anyway, um, if you've come back, <laughs> Again, thank you very much. Uh, you'll see that this looks a little bit differently today. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit later. So, why don't I start off with the knitting? My notes are two pages today. Two pages. There's page one. There's page two. I'm going to start with page two because page two is what's exciting. So, um, page two is all about the knitting, and there has been knitting. If you are a friend of my plurk, you know, because I have plurked about it pretty much incessantly since yesterday afternoon. Um, I have mm, put posts on, fa on Facebook and Ravelry. I've pretty much been all over the interwebs with this because I'm so freaking excited. So let's share, shall we? I finished my Jira Soleil. It is blocked, dried, filthy dirty because it was drying outside so it's got grass clippings and schmutz all over it. I don't care. This is my Gira Soleil. Okay, I'm going to start with the edge. These are the edging points. This is a modification to the pattern. I'll talk about that in a second. And it goes into the cream and then the dark brown and then the light brown and then that center section and then goes out the rest of the way. As you can tell, this is a large blanket. I love it. It's really not next to skin soft. Uh, this is knit entirely out of mystery wool. My father purchased this wool for me. Um, he sees it randomly. He goes to, um, here in Maine we have Blue Seal or Knight's Farm Supply. It's Blue Seal store. It's a feed store. And it's where he buys their dog, uh, their dog food. Um, anyway, so every time he goes in there and he sees yarn, he buys it for me. So I end up with all of these. I think they're machine spun. Um, but they're like locally processed, locally grown, you know, wool from sheep. And it's, you know, it's scratchy, regular, you know, wool. And it comes in various colors because of various, you know, sheep and whatnot. But anyway, so my dad just randomly gives me skeins from time to time. And so I ended up with a lot of this. I'm just going to wrap this around me. I had ten skeins of this wool in various um, colors and, and amounts. So... I looked for something to knit out of it, and what I came up with was the Giro Soleil pattern. Now, Giro Soleil, I'll link it in the show notes. I'm trying to get this all situated here so you can see how pretty it is. Um, is uh, calls for 1,800 yards of worsted weight yarn. Uh, I used about 2,000. I don't know why it just it got to the point where it was nice and big, and and that's what happened. Um, Jira Soleil is by Jared Flood. It is knit on size 10.5 US, which I think is 6.5 millimeters. I better check that because I don't want to be wrong. Um, let me check. I'm checking. Um, I I cast this project on in March, on March 25th of 2009. So it has been more than two years. It has been two and a quarter year, years since I started this. Yes, US 10.5 is a 6.5 millimeter needle. So it's a big needle. Um, I cast this on March 29th. It did hibernate for over a year. I got to like here on the outside edge. If I can get my arm out now. <laughs> this is hot. I'm going to take it off. I got to about here and I just lost my mojo with it. It was 640 stitches per round and it was taking me an hour to go. Just even the plain knit round was taking me forever. I just had to put it away. It was the fall when I put it away, and I was getting ready for Christmas knitting, and I just basically said, look, I can't deal with it right now. Um, I ended up putting it away all of 2010 and didn't pick it up until March, I think, of 2011, so this March. So really, it didn't take me that long to get the rest of it done. The edging took forever. There are 213.3 edging points, and it's the same six rows. 213 times. I thought I was going to kill me. I really did. You, you just, 
you don't want to knit it because you know what it's going to be. And you finally get through like 10 rounds, and you're like, okay, i got to put it out. I can't even deal with it anymore. So, anyway, it's done. Um, I had to block it outside. I have foam blocking mats. I have 32 square feet of foam blocking mats, and that wasn't enough. I had all 32 feet, and then I had towels around the corners, and I was pushing the pins into the corners um, of the towel in order to get the points blocked. It's, it's not aggressively blocked at all. Um, I didn't really pull or stretch it at all. I, I tried to get it to lay flat, but that was about it. Um, I just didn't have room. If I'd had 50 square feet, I might have been able to do it, but I just, there was no way. So I'm happy with it. Um, it's just going to be something to put in the booth. It's going to be something to sort of, you know, show people to amaze them. <laughs> have people go, wow, that looks really hard. And would be like, yeah, it's really hard. It's really not a hard pattern. Uh, in fact, if you're a fast knitter, I totally recommend the pattern. The pattern is easy peasy. The charts go fast. Um, the actual knitting took me forever, but it's a good pattern. So, uh, that was the first thing that I finished this week. So excited. Um, the second thing, um, last week I told you guys that I was going to cast on the Starving Artist hat by Laura Linneman. And I was going to use my own basswood bulky yarn in the terracotta pot colorway. Now I'm going to attempt to get this on while I'm sitting here. Again, bear with me. Um, this hat is fantastic. It took me three days. So much faster than the Gira Soleil is ridiculous. Let me see if I can't. See, I don't generally wear hats like this, but this one is worth the, um, worth it. Okay, so here's the hat. You can see there's the decreases. Um, I have no idea if I just showed that to you or not. It looks perfect. It's actually a little bit big. You can see that I can get quite a bit um, out on the sides. Ugh, my hair. Um, but that was my fault. I This took me three times to get the cast on right because the first two times it wasn't stretchy enough to get over my big giant head. And then the third time I ended up holding two 10.5 needles together to get the cast on edge nice and stretchy. And it totally is stretchy. Um, it didn't need to be quite that stretchy, I think. But it stays on my head even if I wiggle it, which is awesome. So I totally love this hat. I used almost the entire skein. This is how much yarn I had left over. That was mostly my fault because I it says to knit 9 inches in... I never know, does that mean 9 inches at rest? 9 inches stretched out? What, what does 9 inches mean? Um, and so I kind of went almost to 9.5 before I decided to start decreasing. And so I would have had much more yarn left over had I decreased what it said when I finally reached nine inches. But uh, I think it's got just the right amount of drape. It's not too drapey. It's a little big, but I love it. I cannot say enough about the pattern. Starving Artist by Laura Linneman, uh, also known as Lala from the Knit Girls. This is the hat. Very easy, very quick. Directions, super. Um, it's kind of neat that there's no regular knit stitch in this entire hat. The You knit pre pearl and then you knit one through the back loops, and that's what makes that pop out. Oh, out of focus. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, but that's the, the ridges are the knit one through the back loop, which makes them pop a little bit. So I really like that. There's not a single knit stitch in this. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Um, so that was done also. I cast on for that. Wednesday, cast on again two more times on Thursday, and got it done Saturday. So, super fast. Lightning. Quick, quick, quick knit. So, because I finished two projects, I need to, um, I, I can work on two more. So, <laughs> I don't even think I waited like an hour last night after finishing the sewing in the ends on the Starving Artist hat before I cast on something new. And my husband was like, are you really casting on something new right now? Like, you're really knitting? And I'm like, yeah, it's a sickness. I can't help it. Um, P.S. Sorry if I'm a little bit pink, by the way, today. I went four-wheeling today, and apparently that's, like, the only spot where I got sun. I had the goggles on and the helmet, but right here is kind of pink. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I uh, cast on last night for the first baby project of many that you'll be seeing in the next few weeks because my brother and sister-in-law 
are going to be having a baby in January. So I'm knitting the Aviatrix hat by Justine Turner. It's a cute little hat. Right here you can kind of see it. It kind of looks almost like a um, an aviation helmet, like it's a, like one of those skull caps, and it has these neat little pearl ridges in them. The hat is actually knit back and forth on straight needles, and it uses short rows to do the shaping. Let me show you. I'm using, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is the hat. It has the brim here where you cast on. That's knit one, purl one, um, one by one rib. And then it's hard to see it because I am using straight needles. I'm not even using circulars. Um, but this is the hat, and it starts here, and it kind of goes back, and you can see it almost helps itself turn with those pearl ridges. I've done one, two, three, four of the six sections, and you can see here that, like, the ribs are close together here, and then they widen, and then they go back to the edge, because this is all done with short rows. It's actually, once you've figured out what you were doing, it's much easier than I had expected. Um, I hate knitting with straight needles. It says two. I had the size two. Um, my US two circulars are in my Levita Bois socks, which are not done. So I had to use the straights. Um, I hate using straights. These are Susan Bates. US two is 2.75 millimeter. I don't think it'll focus on that. Almost. Um, but yeah. So it's going. It's actually going really fast. I started this last night, and look, I'm four out of six rows, and then I have the back rib to do and then I have to do there's a little strap that goes around and find a button. I'm knitting the six month size and following the sport weight directions as written for sport weight, worsted weight, and DK weight. So it's a great stash buster if you have um, stash that you want to get rid of. I am actually using stash. This is, if you recognize this, this is the Intention Yarns Focus colorway but this is a fingering weight. Now they didn't have fingering weight directions so I'm knitting the six month size and I'm using US 2's and the pattern calls for US 3's so I'm hoping for somewhere around the 3 month size when all is said and done. Um, I think that'll fit a baby's head. I'll measure it when I'm all done so that I can see so in case you guys want to do the same thing with Zock Yarn um, you can do that too but I'm really excited about this hat I think it's going to be cute and I think it's going to be fast which is what I'm all about right now because that Gio Soleil scarred me for life. So. Um, that was one of the projects that I'm working on. The other project I started <laughs> over a year ago. Uh, it's the Even Star Shawl by Susan Pandorf. I started that back when the Even Star Shawl Mystery Knit Along came out. And I got through like five clues. And same thing, I got too many stitches on the needles. I think there's like 576 or something, 570. And I just had had enough. Like I just ran out of steam and it was too big of a project and there were other things I wanted to be working on. So I quit. And it's been hibernating for over a year. So it is definitely time for me to get that back out. Um, Stephen of Dramatic Knits, my hair is crazy, I'm sorry. Um, Stephen of Dramatic Knits and Erin of Mommy Needs Yarn, of course I don't have a hair elastic anywhere, um, are both doing a knit along with that shawl. So I think I'm going to pop open a thread in mine as well, just to post my own stuff. And if anybody else wants to do it and they want to share their progress, they can. I don't want you to feel like you have to post in Steven's group, Aaron's group, and my group because that would be overkill and that's way more than you need. But um, I'll have it there to keep myself accountable. And if I don't have any progress or pictures listed in like a week, somebody get on me about that because that should be done. Um, that should be, that really needs to get, I'm like 70% done on that, I think. Um, I have the beads, I have everything I need, I just need to finish it. So I'm working on quick baby knits. And the Even Star Shawl, I'm going to be digging back out of hibernation. I think tonight we'll see how dinner goes and how tired I am. Okay, so that's that. Let's go on to page two and let's go back to my regularly scheduled thing. I'm probably like 20 minutes in and I don't even, <laughs> I haven't even gotten to my regular stuff yet. I'm just so excited. <laughs> Here's the way it's done. Okay, um, Dye pots. I have been in the dye pots this week. Most of it has been custom dyeing um, orders. I have a little notebook here, let me show you, of custom orders. And when somebody messages me or emails me or plurks me, I write in my little book of the custom orders that I have that need to get done. And when I finish them and people pay for them, I cross them off. Now, I know that this list is not complete because I know there are people that I've forgotten. 
Um, if you have requested a custom order from me, please get in touch with me and just touch base. Say, hey, do you remember I asked you to do this? Specifically, two people asked me to do some lace yarn in the new base that I'm getting. I'm going to talk about the new base in a minute, but they'd asked for peacock and sea glass. Those two people, the woman who asked me for sea glass and the woman who asked me for peacock, please message me because I don't remember who you are. Um, I don't want, to, I'm going to be dying those up soon and I just want to make sure that you get first dibs at them if you decide you want them. So, um, if you have asked me to dye you something specifically, please message me, let me know, plurk me, Facebook me, whatever. Um, get in touch with me so that I know I can remind myself of what you um, wanted. Several of you have orders coming. Um, Nori Marianne, Mountain Pearl, Zeta, you all have orders coming. Um, Angel Luna, you have an order coming. Um, yes. And then the only other thing I dyed this week, I, I attempted to do self-striping sock yarn without, um, without a warp, without warping them like you're supposed to, without a warping board. That's what I was trying to say, a warping board. That didn't work out so well. I haven't actually tested it to see. I'm trying to get that so that I'm not quite so dark here. Oh, that's better. Um, I haven't tested it yet to see if it worked, but I can tell you it was a pain in the butt to try. So I definitely need a warping board. And I told my husband that, and he was like, of course you do. I thought that the whole time. Okay, so he's going to make me a warping board. I've got the whole summer. Why not, right? Um, like I said before, I want to do some of my regular colorways in uh, self-striping format. So we'll see how that goes. So, dive out. Processes. I do design. I don't design often, and I don't design great, profound things, but I do design. And when I design, I try and come up with some sort of combination of yarn, stitch pattern, and garment, type of garment. I do look at a lot of stitch treasuries. Uh, I do a lot of research on Ravelry. I do. I look around to see what are the common construction techniques. You know, do people generally um, use cable cast-ons or lace cast-ons or whatever? Um, what are you know? What are the common things? Because I like to do something that's a little bit different if possible. What stitch patterns have been used or haven't been used? Uh, again, I try and be a little bit unique, so I try and go that way. Now. I left it clear over there, didn't I? One second. This screen's going to blink because I'm going to go get it and then edit that out. Okay, uh, I'm back and I got a hair elastic too. So the next design I'm going to be working on this summer is a pie shawl. I'm going to be designing it. I know, right? What is wrong with me? I just did Jira Soleil, which was a pie shawl. And I did, I'm doing Even Star, which is a pie shawl. And now I'm going to design a pie shawl. Am I freaking crazy? Yes. That's okay. So anyways, um, I'm going to be, now I just, oh, this new camera makes me, adds like 10 pounds. Sorry, oh, new camera, I let it go. <laughs> anyway, um, because I do a lot of research, I decided it was time to buy a new knitting design resource. Enter this book. This is Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitting Workshop. This book is fantastic. If you don't have it, you need to buy it. My only beef for this book is the way that it's bound, which makes it difficult to lay open. And it's all black and white. It has fantastic information about all kinds of different shawls, color, um, garments, sweaters, um, hats, shawls, everything. Part three is about lace shawls. And it's very much, um, the voice in here is very much Elizabeth Zimmerman's. It's very conversational. It's very easy to understand. Um, she does use a lot of capital letters. The caps kind of bugs me, but I'm going to get over it because it's easy and you don't complain about easy. But she talks about um, Emily Auker's beginning, which I have heard before that a lot of people use. It's a crochet beginning. My pie shell is probably not going to have that. It's probably going to have like a regular long tail cast on, and people can just use that end 
and just weave in the hole and tighten it as much as they want or not. I don't really care. Um, but this is her example of a pie shawl. And it's very plain. It's just rings of yarn overs. And then she goes on to show several different um, methods of shawl construction, which is pretty cool. Uh, I really liked some of these. I would like to try some of these. Not with my first shawl. But I absolutely adore Elizabeth Zimmerman. Um, she has a lot of really great advice about knitting construction and knitting design. So I hope to be designing that as soon as I get done the even star. I'm not going to give myself a date, but as soon as even star is off the needles, the shawl that I'm designing will go on the needles. Don't hold me to that. It's going to be a main theme shawl. All of the motifs are going to have um, main aspects to them. So this is my process for the week is research for designing. Okay. Growth. I made a very large order this last week, Thursday, from my supplier. I ordered new stuff. I'm so excited about this. I have new bases. I have a new sock base coming that is wool, bamboo, and nylon. It's shiny. It's going to be pretty. I can't wait. Um, that will have another maple name. It won't be sugar maple sock. It might be silver maple sock. We'll see. Um, I ordered a new base in the lace. So lace is 80% the new one will be 80% merino and 20% silk. Really? Ugh, cat. Oh, P.S. If you can hear crickets in this, it's not you going crazy. They're food for my geckos and they're right next door. And this group that I just got is a bunch of chirpers. So um, I'm sorry if you hear crickets. And it's driving you nuts. I don't even hear them anymore. They're lunch. Uh, all right. So new base and sock, new base and lace. There's a new... I don't remember what the what the wool is, what even what weight it is or anything. But there's a new yarn I'm going to be ordering that I didn't order this time because it comes in seven and a half pound cones. <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to work up to that one. Um, but I am I did order a bunch of new fibers as well. I did order some stuff that I've had before. I ordered some more cordial and some more silk. Um, but I also ordered a new sock blend. It's a fiber that you spin for socks. It's um Wool, mohair, and nylon, I think, that is going to take the dye in a way that you can't even fathom. It's going to be awesome. And it's, I, seriously, the company that I order from bought this yarn from somebody who went bankrupt, this fiber, sorry, from somebody who went bankrupt. So they got it dirt cheap, and I'm passing it on to you, dirt cheap. Um, I recently reformulated all my prices, and a lot of them are going down because, um, the new formula, I have a new, some new efficiencies, so uh, the new formula reflects that, and I think you guys will be happy. So, uh, yes, so I got that new fiber. I also got a merino bamboo nylon fiber, just like I got the yarn, I also got the fiber. Um, the stuff that I bought from Mad Color Fiber Arts, I loved the way that dyed. So I'm going to try some fiber of my own. It won't look like that day glow bright, but it will be beautiful, so. Um, look forward to more updates and uh, some new and interesting bases uh, to come. So that's that's um, growth. Yay. Okay, I have two grabby hands for you. One is probably not exciting to those of you who don't have a business. Um, and the other one should be exciting to everybody, I hope. So the one, the first one. I order my mailing envelopes and a couple of other things from Associated Bag Company. They're AssociatedBag.com. I ordered from them because I'm all out of envelopes. So if you ordered anything from me this week, it's come to you in a box because I had no envelopes. So I restocked my envelopes. Fine. I ordered the stuff and I selected USPS Priority Mail, you know, just to get it here quickly. It takes three to five days, I think, to get it that way. I click Submit. And less than five minutes later, I had a phone call from Associated Bag telling me that it would save me a dollar if I shipped UPS ground and that it would get to me faster because it was two day, two, two business days delivery. Okay. Seriously, within five minutes, they looked at my order, they realized that they could save me a buck and they could get it to me faster, so they just called me up to let me know that they were changing the way they were shipping it to me. That's fantastic. That's like 
Superb customer service. The girl was very pleasant. She spoke excellent English. She was obviously American. Love that about customer service these days. And uh, I didn't have to do anything. I just was like, okay. And she was like, okay, we'll get that right out to you. Thanks. That was it. Who does that anymore? Who looks at that and says, wow, a dollar. That's totally worth making that phone call, which probably cost them more than a dollar to call me. Um, and she saved them that dollar. All right. They've got my business. Really, they have it. It's theirs. All right. Second thing, which I'm sure you've probably already realized. I bought a new webcam this week. Um, I've been struggling with that webcam that I, the last one that I had, um, I can show it to you probably because I've got it right here. This is my old webcam. I don't even know what it is. It's a Logitech. Um, I love Logitech. This is, um, I, I've, I've bought Logitech stuff for years. Um, I had subwoofers and like I had the webcam back in like 03 or 04. Um, not that one, but I did have one. I love Logitech. I think they're great. So when I was looking for a new webcam, um, I did some Amazon searching, and I wanted one that did widescreen. This one does 720, excuse me, 720p HD video. Um, it also has bright light technology, which makes everything brighter. Even in low light situations, I can actually see what's going on. It also has autofocus. So I bought this camera. I looked at the reviews on Amazon. They have side-by-side -side comparisons. Definitely check out the side-by-side -side comparisons because they're totally worth it. They show you what there is for microphone, what there is for video, all that stuff. This is what I ended up buying. The Logitech Webcam Pro 9000. And it does do the HD 720p. It also has this logic vid. Ignore that. Um, it has a Carl Zeiss autofocus lens. It has the HD video and 2 mega, 2 MP sensor, megapixel? That must be the camera. And uh, right light technology. And you can see with the autofocus. Look at that. It just focused it. That's awesome. Oh, I've been wanting an autofocus for so long. There's a lot of other cool things it can do. Let, let me show you. Okay, so I'm saying I'm in Maine, right? Oh, check it out. Now I have moose antlers on my head because I'm from Maine. Seriously? What webcam puts moose antlers on your head? Oh, I lost them. Oh, there they are. Look at that. And I can also do Mommy Needs Yarn. I can do a mustache. Seriously? I have had a lot of fun with this the last few days. I'm really enjoying this. I'm not going to leave that on. Oh, I, do, I could also do a goatee. It's pretty cool. I don't want to be a bearded lady, though, so I'm going to stop it. But there are just, there's a million awesome things I can do with this webcam. Um, I have yet to record with it. This is the first time, so we'll see. I'm really crossing my fingers that I do not have the same troubles that a lot of other people are having with their cameras because that would break my heart because I really love this camera and I really want it to work. So um, that's my new grabby hands. That cost $53 plus shipping. I got it from Amazon. It shipped to me very quickly. I had it within, I think, two or three days. Um, I, it, Amazon doesn't have any anymore, so you have to buy from the other sellers. But the other sellers had it for five dollars cheaper than Amazon did anyway, originally. So it's pretty cool. For fifty bucks, I paid forty dollars for the other old crappy one. Totally worth it. Totally worth it. I'm also hoping that if I go into another um, virtual knit night, that I won't be so laggy and awful, and it will be it will be good. So, yay! Is there anything else? Oh. I forgot to tell you that not only did I get some knitting done this week, but I also got some spinning done. This is my spinning. You'll notice that these are wound into center pull balls because when I take singles off of either my spindle or my wheel, I wind them into center pull balls. I don't wind them around, these aren't specifically around toilet paper tubes. I do use toilet paper tubes, still do the center pull ball. Makes life so much easier and so much faster. I'm going to be doing a demo about this at some point. Um, I haven't yet, so I will soon. Um, but anyways, this is 100% Shetland. It is in the top hand colorway. It is dyed by CJ Kopeck Creations. This was the April Spin Along Fiber, I believe. I purchased this in March of this year. You can see it's got some burgundy, some deep maroons, some really deep teal blues, a lot of gold, um, sort of brassy, rusty colors. Um, it's gorgeous. I love these. I, I tried very hard to spin it fine. 
Um, Shetland is a little bit, Shetland is just a lot grabby. So I had some struggles keeping it even, but, oh wait, there it goes. Look at that focused. Oh, I love it. So these will be applied with themselves. I'm going to apply from both ends of these balls because they're not quite the same size. And I don't know if that's because I didn't divide the fiber evenly because I spun them differently or because one has been sitting for three months and one hasn't. I'm not really sure. One definitely feels squishier than the other one. We'll see. I, this isn't really a finished object, but since I've been spinning the singles for three months, I'm counting it halfway as a finished object because the singles are done. So I'll be applying this this week, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? It's wild and crazy life I lead. I'm not really sure. Um, but these will be a straight two-ply, and I will measure them once they are all done. And I wind them onto my nanny naughty. Then I'll know. So, shop update. I haven't even talked about. Oh, my God. <laughs> really quick. Shop update will happen Monday night at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I, do th I did have some international orders right when I did my shop update at 5, so I think that was working for people. Awesome. I'll do it again. This stuff is not up in the shop yet. I did all the photographing, but I have to do all the listing. I'm off. I'm not at school anymore, so I can do that tomorrow morning. So from probably about 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, that should be ready to look at. There will be bulky yarn. There will be lace weight yarn. There will be hand spun yarn, which I haven't even talked about. There will be Falkland top, Polworth top, which is phenomenal. You really need to get some. Superwash BFL top. I think that's it. So lace, bulky, hand spun, Falkland Polworth. That's what's in this update coming out. There will be lots. Just about as much, I think, as last week. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I know that there are some colorways of lace that you haven't seen yet. Cortland and Spruce, you haven't seen yet. Um, yeah, I'm excited. These colorways can all be repeated. I wrote them all down. So that's all I have to say, I guess, this week. Uh, oh, hey, look, I have a little... I didn't even realize I have a little, like, timer down here in the corner. It says I've been going for 32 almost 33 minutes. So I'm going to say goodbye for this week, guys. I hope shh, that your next week is as productive as my last week was. I hope that you get a lot of spinning and knitting done. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you next week.